Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to our uh, fifth uh, global review of Aid for Trade. I am very, very pleased to be joined this morning by some very important personalities, key people in this uh, exercise. So we have with us uh, Dr. Jim Kim, president of the World Bank Group, uh, Angel Gurria, the OECD uh, Secretary General, uh, Takehiko Nakao, president of the Asian Development Bank, and uh, Joaquin Haite, uh, UNCTAD's Deputy Secretary General. And I'm, <clears throat> by the way, very grateful to uh, Joaquin uh, for stepping in on behalf of Secretary General Kituyi, uh, who has uh, sadly suffered a very dramatic bereavement. Um, our thoughts are with him today. Um, along with our speakers this morning, I'm also delighted to be joined by all of you, of course. Uh, we have a, a huge uh, range of people taking part in the Global Review this year, including over 20 ministers from around the world, also from the Pacific, uh, which is the region that faces uh, the highest natural trade costs uh, due to its remoteness. A similar uh, number of leaders from international organizations are here. Uh, we have representatives from the private sector and more than 1,000 trade and development professionals. So welcome once again uh, to you all. Our theme this year is reducing trade costs to support inclusive, sustainable development. Um, high costs, as you well know, suffocate trade. Um, they limit the gains from trade. And worse, uh, the burden of high trade costs falls heaviest on the poorest countries the smallest firms, and the lowest income consumers. In Africa, high trade costs in the region mean that only 5% of imported food staples are bought from other African countries. If it's taking 40, 50, 60, or more days to export your produce, then you're not getting most out of the trading system. And the phase... Uh, uh, time is money has never seemed more appropriate than in this situation. If it takes that long to move your goods, then you will drive up your costs and it will simply be priced out of the market. As a result, you will be stuck at the first link of the value chain and operate mostly with non-time sensitive commodities. In 34 of 49 LDCs, just three products just three, account for 70% or more of the merchandise exports. So unbalanced economies struggle to deliver balanced developed economies, outcomes. So without diversification, inclusive, sustainable growth, it is all but impossible. High trade costs disconnect the economy from international flows of goods and services, and they therefore stifle creativity the motor behind productivity that drives economic growth. Consumers also get a raw deal. Price of imports are higher and their choice is limited. And that is a big problem if you earn less than a dollar and 25 cents per day. And around one billion people around the world still live in this condition. Now this is why reducing trade costs, particularly for the poorest, is so important. So this is a very important year for trade and development. Um, if you'll forgive me using a few more numbers, uh, this is the fifth global review. Uh, we are preparing the WTO's 10th ministerial conference in Nairobi, making it the first ministerial conference to happen in, in, in Africa. And we are, make, we are marking the WTO's 20th anniversary. And over those 20 years, uh, the WTO has contributed a great deal to development around the world and the integration of developing countries into the global trading system. And since the early 90s, one billion people have been lifted out of extreme poverty. Around two-thirds of that poverty reduction has come from economic growth in developing countries, and trade has been a major driver of that growth. So this year, 
as the world comes together to define the post-2015 development agenda and agree on the new sustainable development goals, I think that we have to make sure that trade plays its full role. And with this in mind, I think we need to do much more. Uh, many people remain disconnected from the trading system or do not feel the full benefits. We must find ways to cut trade costs, lower trade barriers, reduce distortive subsidies, and increase people's capacity to trade so that the poorest can access more of the benefits that trade can provide. Fortunately, we have many tools at our disposal to deliver all of this. So first, as we will hear today, uh, we can achieve a great deal through the Aid for Trade initiative itself. Aid for Trade makes a big difference on the ground, which is what we're all about. In more than 15 African countries, disbursements through this initiative are worth more than 2% of their GDP. It is vital, therefore, that we maximize the results of the Aid for Trade that can deliver. I'm pleased to say that the evidence harvested in the Global Review shows that this is happening. Aid for Trade is helping to link people into the trading system, and therefore, it is improving their lives. Second, we can take a leap forward in cutting trade costs by implementing the WTO's Trade Facilitation Agreement, which was, of course, as you know, finalized in December 2013 in Bali. Mm -hmm. And the Aid for Trade at a Glance report, which you see before you, highlights many examples where border modernization efforts are yielding success. And if you look at the report, I was just making that joke a moment ago, um, it is a pretty good glance, huh? <laughs> really thick. So look at it, take your time. It's a very good report, very detailed, very precise. And in there, you see that countries like Cambodia, Guatemala, Kenya, Lesotho, Peru, Tajikistan, and Togo are just some of the WTO members that are reporting faster clearance uh, times, higher customs revenues and savings for traders from border modernization efforts. And these examples give a sense of the impact that the WTO Trade Facilitation Agreement can have. We are talking about a potential annual boost to the global economy of $1 trillion and 18 million new jobs in the developing world. And there is a lot of support available to help countries implement the agreement. The WTO's Trade Facilitation Agreement facility will be an important channel to deliver the support as well as the programs of our many partners who are here today, uh, including the international organizations, regional development banks, the World Bank, OECD, everybody, and the donors who are also here. So delivering also on the other decisions that were taken in Bali will be very critical as well, particularly those that have um, as, as their objective uh, the benefits for LDCs. Moving on, the third and potentially the most important step uh, we can take here uh, would be to negotiate new development outcomes <clears throat> at our ministerial conference in Nairobi in December. So this is a major focus of our work this year. We're doing all we can to help members deliver. Negotiations are intense. We're still talking. It's tough as everything that we do in the WTO, very hard, but it's not hopeless. Uh, so I think we're moving. I think we're in the right direction. There will be many opportunities to discuss um, um, each of these issues and more over the next um, three days. Uh, in fact, um, there will be many sessions and debates to get involved in, as well as wealth of, uh, a wealth of new reports uh, and data that you will have before you to consider. So <clears throat> let me pick out just uh, some of the key points <clears throat> as I see them. So first, trade costs remain too high, and they still act as a powerful break on the development of the poorest. They penalize small business and the poorest consumers. Second, to travel along the path of inclusive, sustainable development, we must do more to cut trade costs. Third. For developing countries and their financing partners, this means prioritizing trade issues and mobilizing resources in order to build capacity. And fourth, here at the WTO, the message is even simpler. Implement the Bali package, including the Trade Facilitation Agreement, and deliver for development in Nairobi. So let's make 2015 the year of trade and development 
I wish you all a very good three days and productive ones. So thank you and uh, good work for everyone.